What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. And, jeez, uh, man. I, I thought we did this. But I guess not. Let's get into it. This is the truth behind the beef to behind Michael Jordan and Allen Iverson. Yeah. You guys and a lot of you guys probably knew and didn't know and So this is the situation. Michael Jordan. He was always the most dominant. And I'm not saying just the NBA. I'm talking about everything. Everything had to go through Michael Jordan. When Allen Iverson was coming into the league, you guys have to remember, Michael Jordan was just coming back into the NBA for the first time. So the Chris Webbers, the Shaqs, the Penny Hardaways, all these guys who were there before him, you know, this was it. This was the young group and talent that never got a chance to take down Michael Jordan. Now they can have their passing of the of the torch. Because Michael left without passing the torch and the NBA suffered because of it. Now they can have the closure they want, but Michael had to once again sustain. You know, they had to once again sustain their dominance. So Michael had to prove he was the best of all this young talent in the league. Now, looking at the way it was stacked against uh, Michael Jordan coming back, he had very he just came from a disappointing. NBA final against the Orlando Magic. The Orlando Magic had destroyed everything about Michael Jordan and they was like Jordan's done. He he can't cut it no more. It's it's over for him. So Michael Jordan made a camp he was making space jam at the time had all the nba players come out and play with him to get him in shape for the season michael was so focused on next season because he knew he didn't have his legs he knew he he had baseball legs he didn't have he thought he could take a shortcut to the nba championship because he was bored with the regular season. He loved the playoffs, but he was bored with the regular season. So, for Michael Jordan, it was a whole different type of league. And Allen Iverson, and everybody in the league who came in there, like from Kobe on down, they bowed down to Mike. You know, Michael Jordan was just that. He was the man. So when Allen Iverson came in the league, 
Allen Iverson was a big fan of Michael Jordan. You know, he's this little 6'1", barely six feet guard with long arms who can do these crazy crossovers and could leap. But Jordan looked at him as another gangbanger with speed. And those guys didn't last in the NBA. So when they first met in Chicago, you know, it was a, it was like two titans. People were waiting to see what would happen when Allen Iverson met up with, with Michael Jordan. They wanted to see what this is going to look like. What is this going to look like as far as how would, would Mike even step out to guard Allen Iverson? And Iverson didn't come up like Mike. There was no George, no North Carolina in his dreams, you know, coming up under Dean Smith. He had to go through getting out of a, a juvie detention or jail sentence to come into the NBA. I mean, going to Georgetown, becoming a Hoya under John Thompson. And from Georgetown, going to the NBA. Had a great tournament. And after that tournament, he went straight to the went straight to the NBA. No one knew how devastating he was going to be in the league. And with the number one pick in the draft, he was going to be. Out of the best draft, everybody said Ray Allen. Kobe, everybody in there, the number one player and pick in the draft was Allen Iris. Now, the way Allen played the game, he changed it forever because he not only played hard, he played with heart and that couldn't be taken away from him. He wouldn't let nobody, he wouldn't let nobody stop him. He wanted it. So when he was challenged. And I mean, just challenged by Michael Jordan when they played each other. It was where everything started to take its turn for Allen. Allen was just a great rookie who was having a rookie year who was, had some fans because of his fancy moves. But this was the big stage, and this is what really set Michael off. Everybody bowed down to Michael Jordan. From Shaq to Kobe, they all kissed the ring when they come to Mike. Allen didn't come in there kissing the ring. He came there to take him out, and he started talking back to Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan's like, oh, you going to know who I am. I'm Michael Jordan. You don't talk back to Michael Jordan. You a rookie. You don't hold a place. As Mike is old school. Rookies don't talk. So 
So, man, Mike was livid. Livid. And on the court, Mike and Iverson went at it. The very first game in Chicago, Iverson ended up with 15. Mike had 27. They lost. It was a non-issue. It wasn't like Iverson was Jordan guarding Mike, but they made their focal point to lock down Allen Iverson. Now, this is the 96 Bulls. <laughs> okay? This is the team that won the championship and broke the record. Going 72 and 10. Now, after that first meeting, Iverson was like, I'm sorry, y'all. I let everybody down. They was like, no, you didn't. He was like, yeah, I did. I let everybody down. He said, I froze. They was like, you only played 26 minutes. But he's like, nah, I froze. I met Mike. You know, I was froze. So, he apologized to the team. He said, after Mike talked to him the way he did on that court, this will never happen again. The next time we play them, we going at them. He's like, I don't care what they record is. We going at them. And it was like, all right. <laughs> Allen Iverson was dead serious. We are going after them. So <laughs> the very next game, from the opening tip, Allen was going to torch, torch. <laughs> The, the Chicago Bulls. It's in Philly. Michael Jordan's in there going through his usual, you know, warm-ups. And, you know, Mike is in like a calm shark in the water. And Michael Jordan is not really paying attention, but he see, he knows Allen's coming for him. He know Allen Iverson is not playing any games. This is going down and it's going down tonight. <laughs> he knew he knew he had to match that energy. So when he didn't uh, match that energy, it was a rough night. Because Mike was like, oh, he had to catch up early. It wasn't going to have to be cruise control. And it all, the momentum shift. When Iverson grabbed the ball, stopped, popped on Michael Jordan. And they lost the game. But he went at Michael Jordan. He played 46 minutes. Michael played 44. And Michael them got the victory, but Iverson scored 32. Mike scored 31. This is the game everybody forgets about because this wasn't the game of the classic step back game. Now, Mike is 34 years old. Mike is 34 years old. Allen Iverson is about, how old is Allen Iverson? Allen Iverson has got to be, man, 
I think he's 21. And when they went into that game in Philly, they said, all right, let's get to it. They wanted to beat Michael Jordan and the Bulls. They went after him like, we almost got him last time. Let's get him now. Allen Iverson went off that game. Michael Jordan had an off night. And what made it worse is Jordan, they won by like 20 points, but Jordan let Allen Iverson catch him with a cross move at the top of the key to break him down. It was vicious. He crossed him, tapped him. Wow, 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 embarrassed Michael Jordan. Jordan went right back down the court and got a three-point play on the other end. Nobody was going to remember that. Allen Iverson was born right there as an NBA player. But the game before that, when he went at Mike and they basically crossed each other out, and he showed Mike, no, I'm, I'm for real. I'm here to stay. But it was this game that caused the real friction because Mike couldn't scare this kid. He couldn't, this kid was not gonna bag down from Michael Jordan. He was not gonna show respect. He was gonna violently do it his way on the court, ferocious. And Mike had no control. But they're also starting to notice something else. There's a Titanic shift from what the NBA was trying to do. The NBA was trying to hand the league over to Penny Hardaway and you know, Shaq and the Orlando Magic and they were gonna be a dynasty. That was the goal. You know, keep Penny and Shaq was gonna be the next the thing to come up because they were already at the top. It was Jordan and, and Penny and all these guys. Kobe and Iverson are the, the future that's going to come after, the, you know, this whole thing is over. Penny then was going to hand it down to Kobe and Iverson, maybe. Allen Iverson, his popularity off that one move jumped and propelled him to a whole nother level. And Michael Jordan loved to say, I don't do politics. I'm not the type to go and uh, talk to somebody and against another player. But that's exactly what he did. See, there was no social media then, so the media was the weapon. They used certain, just like LeBron uses uh, Brian, what's his name, Warthog. And he uses Warthog to get his message out. Whenever Warthog reports, it's coming from LeBron, believe it, and his team and what they want to put out at the time. So whenever they post something, you know who it came from. But um, Michael went and put something and did an interview with Lacey Banks. Uh, I think he passed away now. Rest in peace, Lacey. But he was a Michael Jordan sucker. And Lacey was writing about Allen Iverson's interview. They they did. Allen Iverson, I always kept keep a gun on me. And then when they played in there, they made sure that they echoed it over and over. Allen Iverson always says he carries a gun on him. Allen Iverson always says he carries a gun. It just kept echoing on the network television. So that people was like, Allen Iverson carries a gun, you know, to, to put out that he's a threat. Michael was doing this to see how the kid handles this pressure. But you're putting a negative pressure on a kid, you know, who's young in the NBA. But Michael was trying to push this to Russ, um, what's the name, Russ Granite, so that he could say, see, you're trying to make this kid the next star and, you know, look at what he's doing and, and all this stuff and all this media attention about Allen Iverson. Everybody's watching Sports Center to watch the clips. 
They didn't care about the final score. People wanted to do the move that Allen Iverson did on Michael Jordan. So everybody's going to the Sixers game to see Allen Iverson cross somebody. That was the game. They didn't even care about their records. They were selling tickets. They were selling jerseys. And Michael Jordan is like, we won the game by 20. <laughs> but Michael didn't have his best night. He had 23 points because they, they were up big. Mike didn't really have to go off on score all these points. But he percentage-wise, he didn't he didn't really shoot the ball that well. He was 9 for 24 that night. So when they came back again, Mike was more efficient when they played in Chicago that time. But it was all the interviews about Allen Iverson. Is he a thug? Is he not a thug? And then he was arrested, like right after that, for possession of a firearm. Right after that, it was drugs and firearm. Right after that. Next game they played, after they played Michael Jordan, because Michael Jordan said that move was illegal anyway that he did. That's carrying. So Michael was like, that's an illegal move anyway. That's carrying. So he's like, the referee just missed the call. That was carrying. So every time Allen Iverson did the move, the high cross, they called carrying on Allen Iverson. They did it like two, three times in a row. And he knew, oh, okay. I can't do the high cross no more. So the move he did on Michael Jordan, they took it out the game. Just that quick. Allen Iverson could not do the high cross no more. You never saw Iverson do that move again. They took it away and said, no, that's carrying. You can't do it. So for the rest of the ninth <laughs> the season, Allen Iverson could not do the high cross no more. He's like, I can't rock them the way I rocked them, Mike. They won't let me. It's illegal now. So Mike was playing LeBron James type of moves back then. The politics. So when they played, Iverson went off again, lit him up for like, he had 44, and they had 30. Mike had 30, but it was a more efficient game. And the Bulls won. <laughs> I mean, every time they clashed, the Bulls won. That was just it. But the league belonged to Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson had took the league over. His popularity had soared over Penny Hardaway in a snap, mainly because of personality. Penny is more of a quiet person. That's why when they did the commercials with Penny Hardaway, they had to have Chris Rock really be the focal person in there to sell Penny because he's quiet personality, very low key guy. And Allen Iverson again came out And played Mike, and he got his first victory over Michael Jordan and the Bulls. And when he did that, Jordan had 20 points, and Iverson was unconscious, scored 31. And it was like, okay, this is this is a rivalry here. This is the passing of the guard. Like, this is it. The two heavyweights are going at it, and this is what it's going to be now. They can beat the Bulls. Well, that was just the Bulls having a bad night in Philly. <laughs> As Michael Jordan came back and got the victory the very next game, they shut Iverson down. 
held him to 18 points. Mike was determined he was going to let Iverson know, you're not going to take me down. Because for the first time in history, in 1998, Michael Jordan was losing. Air Jordan shoes were losing when it came to actual sales. The Allen Iverson question shoes had become the most popular shoe in the United States of America. It had surpassed the Jordans. No other shoe had ever done it in creation. And Ivan Iverson shoes, even for a short period of time, it did that. It was so popular, they made questions for different brands to other universities, had contracts with Reebok just to wear the question shoes. They wanted the Reebok questions. Michigan State, they wore them in green. They want the green color. This, this, they want it in yellow. It was a big phenomenon. People wanted to create their own questions with different colors. The marketing avenues for that shoe alone, the first questions, they were like, man, people just want that shoe. They love that design. And it was born. It was a Michael Jordan passing the torch to Allen Iverson. And even in Michael's final games against Allen, he still, when he was in Washington and stuff, he still was going 30. He still was balling. Mike was still determined to give it <laughs> to Allen Iverson. It's just that when he scored 30, Iverson would score 40. But he learned to respect Allen Iverson and said, okay. All right, you went through all the stuff I did to you. Now, I see that you really an NBA, you know, a ball player. You know, and he embraced Allen. The more he started to see him in the All-Star games, the more he saw Allen Iverson play as a player, you know, especially his MVP year, 2001, even though he rooted for Kobe and Phil. <laughs> to beat Allen Iverson. Like he told Phil, are you not, when are you going to decide to double team him? You letting that little MF <laughs> run around the court. When y'all going to decide to double him, Phil? So. That was it, man. It's just basically he he earned Michael Jordan's respect. So when he left the league, he had a whole different respect for Allen Iverson. He loved Allen when Allen left, you know, more than when Allen first came in the league, you know, because he's not used to that. He's not used to somebody, you know, telling him what he can and what he can't do. You know, or, you know, he's Michael Jordan. And he's had that aura around him for so long. When someone comes and challenges that mantle, you know, that's a that's a bit of a blow to take. You know, when somebody tries to take that from you violently like he did. And at that point when Mike was past it, you know, he told him just pass it on. You know, pass on all the things you learned. And he was more than happy to leave the league in the hands of the Kobe's and the Allen Iversons. He felt like, yeah, they got it. They're going to be okay. <laughs> like, yeah, the league doesn't really need me no more, and I've got no more game left to get. So as much as a player, it was more of a tutelage. 
So on that note, I'm out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. I'm gone.